Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the college football playoff recap, a reaction, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we are, we're going to do a whole bowl recap and whatnot at the end of the bowl season. We still got over a week of games left on that. That's um, right. But right now, we're only going to talk Clemson, Ohio State, and LSU, Oklahoma. Those two led to another bowl game, a four, uh, 40th bowl game. Uh, so we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about those games and uh, and what it means to each school, how these games turned out the way they did, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the show first brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Good gracious, tunicatravel.com. They got a whole bunch of incredible things besides just the sports books. So go check it out. Uh, also, Smack Apparel, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. That's W I N. You'll get 20% off your order. They got pro and college teams, all your favorite shirts, all your favorite gear. Go check it out. You're going to enjoy it. I, I tell you, you are going to love it. Uh, also, go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over there, our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. cetera. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe, leave us some comments. Chris, you are playing injured right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had super jacked up eye situation and uh and then man i uh, blew my knee out yeah that's I, it it seems sucks the, being old uh, i'm not uh, making it up those stairs right now so it, it's uh, been it's been two weeks, you get two weeks of of health problems and yeah. it's just <laughs> well, and not even like look i'm i'm like a gigantic dude i'm the biggest guy i know and none of them are weight related none of them <laughs> which is shocking to everybody when i walk into the er They're like oh I got to have a stroke. Yeah. No heart, heart problems, diabetes. No, none of that. Nope. 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 They run tests and you're, and you're healthy as a horse. I'm and you're to tell to go. That's, that's not it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, nah. Hey, the good news is you can still do the show. So oh, yeah, they're all fixable. That's yes. nice. I like that. That's <laughs> definitely a good thing. So, so yeah, we can, uh, we can at least talk. We can talk sports. You can still watch games. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, I get it. Yesterday, got to watch a lot of games because I, I am <laughs> locked into the chair. So, all right, wait. So, so the injury, the knee stuff, did that happen? Was that Sunday? Happened yesterday morning. That was Sunday morning. Okay, so so Saturday night, had not, you didn't hurt it celebrating oh, no. LSU, anything no, like that? No, no, that's, that's what everybody thought. No, it wasn't that. It definitely wasn't that. So, <laughs> thankfully, my LSU Tigers gave me what I've asked for for Years and years and years of all my teams when they make it to big, big games. Just give me a rocking chair game. One time, I just want to kick somebody's ass. I just don't want to stress. I don't want to worry about this game. Yeah, I can uh, I can understand that. You didn't have and to worry about this. that was very game. good for the old ticker. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that one. Let's okay. start off with the big one, though. Uh, the one that, that drew... Uh, over 21 million view. I think it was over 22 million viewers. Um, there were people uh, on Twitter and whatnot that were claiming that this is a screw job, that ESPN wanted Clemson to win, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, look, if you we, we, if, we talked about that when we did our preview, yeah, that if anybody wanted a screw job, it was going to go Ohio State's way. Yes. And, and look, I really think that the officiating is just that bad. Like I know. I, I have a hard time believing people can be this bad at their job for as long as they've done it. I, I have a real hard time believing that. And and so I am skeptical always just because anybody else in the normal world, if you're that bad at your job, you don't get to do that job very long. Exactly. These people are high-profile jobs. The lease should be shorter for them. Most of them, we don't know their name. So if they get fired for being bad at their job, we don't even know about it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what's crazy. Uh, and on top of that, the SEC uh, uh, head of officials, whatever it is, Steve Shaw, uh, he just got hired as the national head of officials. So oh, that's <laughs> – How did he get that job? 
I have we, no we idea. had to be the worst this year, right? I mean, you, you would assume. The SEC had to be the worst. How the hell did he get that job? I don't think the SEC was the worst. I mean, remember all of the different Pac-12 screw jobs that have happened. Think about no, all but of that, the all right, well, Last year, I remember that, but I don't remember that this year. It Oh, it happened several times this year. Um, but that's the thing. There's a lot of games that we don't see because there are so many games going on at one time. True. Uh, honestly, the SEC probably had the most high-profile screw-ups, yeah. but didn't have the most. And that's the problem, right? we got like, to figure this thing out. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. If you think about it, uh, during the LSU-Oklahoma game, there were I, I did tweet out something on Saturday because so many people were talking about uh, how LSU committed pass interference on Oklahoma at some point, and they were already up like twenty-one to seven. Um, yeah. or I think it, it was either that or no, twenty-eight. To that seven. was that was that was when it was close. Yeah, I was really glad that it didn't matter. It was a blatant pass interference. Yes, it was. I have no idea why it wasn't called. But man, my Twitter feed immediately just blew up, and it's all of these guys with the blue check marks, and it's, that's unbelievable. And I can't believe. And I just laughed, and I said. I don't know why you're surprised. It do, It's like this every week. every week. Like every game, there is going to be something like this where everybody's watching and going, that's the wrong call. Like, yeah. it happens all the time. And you just have to hope your team is on the positive end of it, yes. not the negative. And, and I'm telling you, it, it was almost like a precursor to this yeah. Ohio State Clemson game, which everybody knew was going to be a really tight game. Yeah, that game, it mattered. Yes. That game, every call mattered. So, I think they only got one call bad in that game. That was egregious. Yeah, I think. well, now, I think that was the fumble. That's a fumble. Okay. That's that's, we're, we're, we're talking about the same call. Okay. That's, the I, guy in the booth, are we, we going to talk about that right now? Yeah, let's, let's go that? ahead. Let's go ahead. Yeah, because we're, we're talking Clemson, Ohio State here. So let's, Whoever let's the ahead. referee in the booth is that they went to, I don't, I don't know who these guys are, okay? but they're former referees, whatever. And he says, you can't watch the replay in slow-mo and make your decision. You have to watch it live. My problem is, is the replay shows an official watching it live and calling it a fumble. He saw it in real speed, closer than any of us, with the only angle he had. And he says, that's a fumble. He did enough with that football. He had complete control of it. He moved enough he to make three, that a fumble. He took three full steps. Yes. He made and, football And moves. then they took it off the board, and I thought, how do you overturn that? That's So Pete Thamel uh, tweeted yes. out, I believe it was Terry McCauley. Is that the guy's name? Yes. So, yes. It, yeah, it, and you may not know who he is, but uh, he's very well respected among officials, uh, NFL yes. guy, et cetera. And he came out and said, there is no way that you can look at that replay and, and overturn, overturn a, call. a call on the field. Like, yeah. no matter what it is, you cannot overturn that call. So, if it had been a fumble, or if it had been uh, an incomplete pass, I don't know that you can overturn it from it, being it an, incomplete pass. an incomplete pass. The fact that they ruled it a fumble, he took three steps and made a football move with control of the ball. Yep. You can't overturn that. And it took a touchdown off the board. Now, what did it mean? Who knows, right? Like, it, well, I think I, I it, think it it, I actually do think that play yeah. meant the game. Yeah, I, I think it completely changed the course of the game. Well, it, and, it it ends the game because Clemson scored on a last second drive to win the game. I know a lot of things could have happened, but at that point in time. Ohio State was kind of dominating this football game, and Clemson was just fighting to hang on. Well, at, no, at that at that exact point, Ohio State was already down. Like, oh, that's that, right. Clemson, that was after halftime, yeah. right? Clemson had the the point that changed the game was uh, Sean Wade going out with that targeting call yeah. because it, Ohio State was up sixteen to nothing. Really should have been up way more than that. Way more than that. Um, that's on them, by the way. That's, settling that's, for field goals. Great teams score in the red zone touchdowns. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. So it, if you get in, if you get that, the red that ain't zone, Maryland out there in the red zone for you, buddy. Yeah, if if you get into the red zone four times and you do not score yeah. a touchdown on any of them, that's I mean you're going to lose that you, game. Man. Yeah, that's the game. That so, and that is the game as well. The um, the targeting call. Uh, it, it, people were irritated by it and mad about it and. That shouldn't have been targeting, et cetera. 
look, by the letter of the law, that yeah. is targeting. He dropped his helmet. Yeah, that is He's, targeting. And now, I don't know why, as a defender, why do you're in perfect form tackle and you have the guy in your sights, why do you drop your head? That, you got me. You I got don't understand. Even, even forget the fact that you've been coached and trained and had it beaten in your brain, supposedly, if your coaches are doing their jobs. From from these guys are to high school level up. Okay, it's it's not like this heads up play thing just started a couple of years ago. I mean, it's been going on for a decade. These yeah. guys are playing middle school football and they're learning heads up, tackle with your face, or, or at up. least they they should be, right? At least they should be. I, man, um, I think every little league out there is doing it, and I think every high school out there is doing it. I mean, it's. I, it, that, I would be the, shocked if anything lower than college is not doing that, that's it. That's the biggest thing: is it, don't lead with your head. You you lead with your shoulder. Yeah. And but you just make keep sure your head up. Grab, if you yeah. keep your head up, and your face mask hits the side of his head or any part of his body, you're fine. You're fine because you're not using the crown of the helmet. That's right. When that big dome hits him, yeah, it's over. It's yeah. over. It's, it's got to go situation. So. With that being said, with, with those scores calls, twice in three minutes, hadn't uh, scored the whole damn game. Yeah, that that because I had Ohio State plus two and a half, and then I took them again at plus three, uh, which and I didn't have a ton on this game because who knows, right? Like uh, there was there was no way to know. Now I did win an Ohio State first half on it because yeah. I thought because Clemson has not played anybody even close to this all year, I yeah. thought Ohio State would have the advantage in the first half. Smart bet, and that was right. But, that was right. They got hit in the mouth for the first time in their life. It, it got and it got hairy there, though. I it, mean, they. I mean, it was sixteen to fourteen at the half, and and only had Ohio State uh, plus a half point yeah. in the first half. So yeah, like, but but I mean, it. I mean, hell, it could have been twenty eight to. to oh, it, it it probably should have been. Yeah, like it, that's uh, two drops in the end zone, like or, or two by, drops by that, that would have been touched by a guy who thought. This guy's good yeah. enough to be considered for for Heisman Trophy. He yeah. got Heisman Trophy votes. Yes, and I mean, I just it it blew me away. Blew me he away. He had some impressive runs, but Dobbins was the goat. The original way we used to think of goats yep. in this game, he yeah. was absolutely the goat of this game. Oh, he was he was unreal. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up my stats here. Da da da. All right, Clemson, Ohio State. There we go. Um, so, net yards rushing, Ohio State had 196 rushing yards on 39 attempts. That's five yards per rush. Uh, Clemson did not get a ton of plays in this game. Now, no. if, you, if you just look at bare-bone stats, rushing, Ohio State had 196 to 158. Uh, passing, let's see, passing yards, Ohio State had 320. Clemson only had 259. But if you look at the total offensive plays, you had 85 for Ohio State and 62 for Clemson. Clemson had 6.7 yards per play. Ohio State had 6.1. Um, I mean, that's, that is that is what it is, right? Uh, Ohio State had 30 more penalty yards than Clemson did. Yep. That's uh, Those hidden yards in there, I mean, that, that means a ton. That just means a, a whole well, lot. Well, in a game this close, that means a yeah. lot. And so it means it, a whole lot. It, uh, it, Dobbins was next level. I mean, just next level kind of stuff. Uh, 18 carries for 177 yards. Um, well, he lost had an unbelievable three. game, but yeah. he had two drops that are unforgivable. Yeah, and that's, that's and the biggest problem. And he'll regret it the rest of his life. And still had six catches for 47 yards. No, that's right. But two of those in the end zone. Uh, Matt. Uh, well, and then at the so let's talk about the end of the game. Uh, Chris Olav runs the wrong direction, like the wrong route, and uh, all right, honest, honest question. Is there a zero percent chance that he ran the wrong route, or is it a hundred percent that he ran the wrong route, and it's zero percent that field through the wrong route? Uh, no, Olav came out in the post game press conference and said, "I ran the wrong route." I know, but, I know he did, and he he took blame. He took a hundred percent of the fall of this. I don't always believe that. That that is a guy that's not going to throw his teammate under the bus. And he is a leader. That is leadership right there. That is a guy saying, this is on me 100%. But I don't know that I believe that. And the reason I don't know is because it it looked like Fields was throwing that ball even before he knew anybody was going to be there or not. 
Yeah, but that it's the, I think that he threw the ball to where he knew his guy was going to be. Like I mean, I wouldn't have been close to getting there had he broke the right way. Because at the time the ball got there, if you look at the time he made his break, he yeah. wasn't close to that area. No, he wasn't. Uh, I watched that on slow p- play replay over and over again. And when that guy breaks, that ball is coming out. And he's 15 yards away from where that ball ends up. He's not making it there, but if it was a post route, he because he was on that side of the field, he, he'd have been right there. Right when he breaks, the ball's out of the hands, and if it's going his way, he's got it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you that that either either this the the ball was grossly grossly thrown way too early or way off target from where it was supposed to be. Or Fields is not un, out of blame on this. I don't think that's a catchable ball if he runs the right route anyway. Because if you watch when that ball leaves his hand, he's a hell of a receiver. He ain't that damn fast. Nobody's that fast. I, I don't know that I agree. I think I think there is a chance. You think that, he could have covered that much ground that quickly? Yeah, I, I think I he could have. Like, I, I, I really think that that, it, I mean, I think 60% of the time that's a touchdown. Like, he, he threw it. Yes, he threw it early, but you're supposed to on those routes. And the deal is, he is so much faster than Noah Turner. Like, Not, the guy that got the interception, which, by the way, fantastic story about that kid had yeah no, had no not, not a knock on him and that but that guy wasn't even really the one covering him though i mean yeah. that guy was playing middle of the field zone yeah. no 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 he definitely was I mean, he was just playing center field got a can of corn yeah but i i really think like i think olaf could have made the catch had he run the route the, the correct way i don't like, i don't know cuz i watched where the ball left his hand and when he broke and where he was on the field in the end zone even if he breaks the right direction, dude, it's that's a lot of ground to cover. That's a lot of ground to cover. All right, so you're not at full speed because you're so, coming out of a break. Agreed. Even had he go, go just go back and look, you might be right. Go back and look at it and think about when the ball left his hands and 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 where he was when the ball left his hands and where the ball actually ended up in the end zone. Where the guy caught it because he didn't catch a dead center of the end zone. No, no, it he wasn't dead center. More, I know that. I, mean, more I went back and watched the end zone it. when the dude was breaking from the far left side. Yeah, I went back and watched it like four or five times, and, and I and, just thought, dude, because that's fifty yards wide, man. I mean, no, he, no, he no I know what you're minimum, minimum fifteen to twenty yards in the time that the ball leaves his hand till it gets there. You're talking a couple of seconds. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I mean, that's running basically running a. The beginning part of your forty-yard dash in, in a second and a half, two seconds. Yeah, that's, you're not that. You, no maybe one's you're that right. fat. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Uh, either way, they they get down the field in almost no time. Uh, I felt like Clemson might have scored too early. Like as soon as I saw it, I said, "Okay, I can see that." Uh, I mean, there was still a minute forty-nine left. Ohio State still had what like one timeout or two timeouts left, whatever it was. I don't remember the timeout situation, but they moved down quickly. They didn't really need them. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it was. They, they it moved was, down as Ohio quickly. State offense like we've seen all year. I mean, as, as quickly as Clemson moved down the field, Ohio State did the same thing to them, which was nuts to me. It's, it's like both teams were saving up and, like, knew exactly what was going to work in those situations. But you know what's amazing? I don't feel – now, Clemson, I absolutely felt, was very conservative play calling at the beginning of the game. Ohio State was not conservative. They came oh, out no. and threw them, like, their first seven, eight, nine yards. No, plays, I mean. Like, yeah. they – and they weren't just running, like, basic – like, a base uh, offense. Uh, they were they were aggressive from early on. But I guess they did move the ball up and down the field from the start of the game kind of easy all day. Yeah. They just couldn't score in the red zone. That was the story of this game. Clemson's defense was bend but don't break. They yeah. gave up a shitload of yards, and they made them kick field goals. Yeah. No, they definitely did. I mean, 16 to nothing. I, I mean, there were so many times that I thought that, okay, Ohio State's about to score another one here, and this, this may end up turning into a rout. If they just got one touchdown, 
I yeah. think the game is over. I mean, you you get one and it makes it twenty to nothing instead of sixteen to nothing, and it exactly. kind of it. I mean, it changes the whole course of the game. It, it changes what the offense on the other side has to do, and now you're playing against the clock more than you're playing against the other team. And instead, you're up sixteen to nothing, which is still only a two possession game, and and they score twice, twice yeah. in three minutes. They hadn't scored the whole game, and you give up two scores in three minutes before the end of half. That was the story of the game for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. How, do, how does your defense do that? That's a good question. I, I'll say this. Trevor Lawrence, I had no idea about about his legs. Like, I, I will – so, I had a couple of uh, uh, sharps that I follow on Twitter, and one of their biggest plays was Trevor Lawrence over 34 and a half yards rushing in the game. And I kept thinking – Okay, like this seems like a good bet. If you go back and look, like he he does this in games where they need him to, and this seems like a game where they might need him to. And I thought, okay, I could see him going over 35 yards, but in college, it also counts sack yardage. And I understand that Clemson like can get the ball out quickly if they need to, but if they go down, which I thought they might, and, and they did, Okay, well then, if he sits back in the pocket for a little bit, then Chase Young and, and those guys can get home. And I know that they have been they've been great at bringing cornerback blitzes and, and safety blitzes and whatnot. So I was like, okay, maybe. Um, I, I, it was it was strange to see thirty four and a half as the total rushing yards for Trevor Lawrence, and then he just blow it out of the water on one play. Yeah. I mean, he was their leading rusher and their leading passer. Obviously, leading passer. But, yeah, him being their leading rusher as well was hilarious. He had 16 carries for 132 yards. His long was 67 yards. And that yeah. one, he blew by everybody. Everybody. I mean, everybody in the somebody, secondary. Somebody, somebody tell me about this Ohio State defensive speed. Because <laughs> we heard about it all year. We heard about it all year. And Trevor Lawrence is athletic. And he is mobile. Burrow, athletic, mobile. These guys, These guys are not. They're not Russell Wilson. They're no. not. They're not Lamar Jackson. They're not Michael Vick. Okay. They're just not. No. No. Not at all. They're uh, not that fat. They are super athletic, and they move, and they are faster than they look. But it. There's no way this Ohio State speed. We got SEC speed over here. No, you do not. No, you do not. Because he doesn't get 66 yards on one run. He can get 17. He can get 20. But somebody is catching him before he hits 50 yards. Well, with LSU, like with Clemson going against LSU, I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Um, I Uh, I also want to – I'm going to dunk on one more guy. I've kind of dunked on him a little bit. I'd be real careful before I put the second overall pick in Mr. Young. There was multiple times in this game, one in particular, one of those big yards, it was 17, 20 yards. It wasn't a massive one. Big enough, though, in a big play situation where Young is obviously setting the edge. And I have no idea why it is Trevor Lawrence running this way, Young is setting the edge, and all of a sudden Young just, for some reason, just collapses straight inside. And Lawrence just bounces back and goes right around him. Like, what the hell are you doing, man? you got all the athletic ability in the world, but your brain, it just isn't there. It just isn't. Somebody's got to coach that guy up on how important it is to make sure you set the edge. There was nobody for him to pitch the ball to. Yeah, It was a shorter route if he stayed in the pocket. But your job is not to get to the quarterback at that point in time. Your job is to maintain the outside integrity of of the line of scrimmage. Well, it, but it depends on what was called, right? Like, if he was counting on somebody else to be there. No, he was the only guy there. Everybody else was backing behind him. There was no – it was him and grass all behind him. Okay, so he, he basically – he ran himself out of the play. Yes, and he runs himself completely out of the play, and that was a situation where you tackle for a loss huh, or you gave up a 17-yard run. Yeah. Hmm. yeah that's... I mean, you're, you're talking about a net 20-yard difference. No, yeah, yeah. I don't remember right. the down, but like, let's say that's a third down, and they're punting. You're getting the ball. Are you? Are we kidding me? Hey, let's. You're supposed let's to be the number two guy overall. People said you're the best athlete out there, and athletic wise, you probably are. Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about the roughing the uh, the kicker penalty. Okay. I am of the belief that that was a a correct call. 
because I've always been taught if you run into the the kicking leg of the kicker, then it is going to be roughing every time. It's it's a fifteen yeah. yard by the by the letter of the law. Once again, by the le- here's the problem that everybody has with these penalties. The letter of the rule on both of them were were followed. The problem is his intent was just not there. Those yeah. guys didn't hit that guy hard, and that was safer. You're worried about him planting his foot and then you hitting him yeah. and getting rolled up on. But they were all standing straight up when they hit him. And and when he got hit, and he didn't fall awkward, he didn't even fall hard. And it, it, he it was just one it. of those things where you could tell that, man, A, I, have not, I thought they blocked the punt. Because they got there and the yeah. way they got there, I immediately jumped up. I was like, punt block! They blocked the punt! They blocked the punt! And I was like, wait, what? How the ball? How the hell did the ball get off? Yeah. Still don't know that at all. Um, right, right call. But at some point in time, I, I now here's the problem. We're asking people who are already bad at their jobs to make judgment calls now. Yeah, and that's and where it gets even more weird. If you don't think intent was, you know, there, then I'm okay with a, a ref saying, man, that's running into the kicker. I don't care what he did. This is not worth 15 yards in an automatic first down. It's just not. Tell me, Tell me this. Uh, why? And and I'm watching the uh, the first responder bowl right now. You watching the uh, who's who's up? What, well, it's twenty to twenty Western Kentucky. What seventeen seventeen when we started? Yeah, so it's twenty twenty. No time left on the clock. They called pass interference on a hail mary, and it moved them up fifteen yards. They are attempting a Western Kentucky is attempting a fifty two yard uh, field goal for the win, and he hit it. So, 23-20, Western Kentucky wins. Uh, I get the cover. So, I had three and a half. But uh, yep. <laughs> still. That, I think uh, that line opened at like six. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, we'll go back and check when we do our recaps and whatnot. I think, I think it opened up big. It may have. It may have. But, yeah, that that was a incredible ball game. And, I mean, pass interference on a Hail Mary. I mean, it's just like, come on, man. In a, in a first responder, like get, send this thing to overtime and let us play. Just give us overtime. Just give us extra football. Yeah. You ain't got nothing else to do. Well, I mean, I, I will say this: it's uh, it's after three, so they're getting ready to kick off the uh, the Music City Bowl. So ESPN oh, was probably like, the phone. Yeah, they've yeah. already kicked off the Music City. There you go. So ESPN was like, "Yo, n- nobody cares about Western Michigan and, and Western Kentucky, so let's yeah. <laughs> let's fire this thing over to Louisville and Mississippi State." Both the other games have kicked. There you go. Um, all right, so back to this, though. Um, I, I'm curious, on that, uh, when they were attempting the punt block, I understand that he's kicking basically from his end zone. Yep. But you get, you've gotten a stop. Why not just let him kick the ball? Like, uh, save I yourself the, I, the possibility of a 15-yard penalty that would give them a first down and, and just take the field position because he, he was going to get the ball at, at – at least midfield, if not better. As aggressive of a play caller I would be if I ever coached a team or ran a team, I, I'm with you 100%. If the other t- – I would be in punt safe every time. They're not They're not getting a first down on this play. If they're lining up to kick and they're giving me the ball, we are going to take the ball. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure there are no fakes – and that's it. And we're going to call fair catch wherever the damn ball lands. I don't care about your return. I don't want holding calls. I don't want penalties. My my special teams coach would hate me if he had <laughs> all these pump blocks lined up. And you know what I probably would do is I would probably – we'd still practice them. We'd still work on them. You, no one would have any game film on them because when we need it, if we're desperate, then you do it. Yeah. But and if you've got like desperate. a hell of a returner, you know, then, then you got to let that guy eat sometimes. But yeah. for the most part, man, no, I'm with you. If you're giving me the ball, and I, and we've moved the ball on them all day long, yeah, take, that, that's that's take the problem. The damn ball, you're you're getting you're going to get great field position. What what big game were we watching? We were texting back and forth watching. I don't even know. It was college or pros, and it was like fourth and three, and they jumped off sides, just like being excited. Uh, it might have been an LSU game. I, I don't remember. I know we were very into it, texting back and forth in our group text, and and I I was I know just what like, you're talking what, about, but I don't remember what, the game. What are you doing? I, I don't. I couldn't tell you the teens. Couldn't tell you anything about it. But I'm just like, 
why the hell do you even want to jump here? Like you're basically pass blocking, you know, like, yeah. like what, what good, why do you want to hit the guy in front of you? Let the ball snap and let him hit you and throw him to the ground. Yeah. That's especially on a punt when you are getting the ball back. That's like, right. I, it made right. no sense to me. Now, if you're one of these teams that are offensively inept, we're having a different conversation. Okay. I mean, if, if you're, you know, just one of these teams that doesn't score many points, then, then yeah, I get it. But anybody else in today's game where it's just points galore, offenses have so many advantages. Yes. Take, take the football. Just take the football. Yes. Don't give them more opportunities. It makes no, no. sense. Makes no sense. Um, so the, the Noah Turner story, pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. He had no other scholarship offers. His dad was Kevin Turner, played at Alabama. Um, I mean, the kid was, what, a two-star? Maybe. It, it, maybe not even that. He may have been a zero. But he's been coached up well enough that Brent he was in, is he, one of the best oh. coordinators, if not the best coordinator in all of football on he, both sides of the ball. He made adjustments in this game. And those adjustments won them the football game. That's right. This I mean, game was won by Brett. Yes. And so it, it, he was – he was something else. It, it terrifies yeah. me to think about the fact that he doesn't have any real desire to be a head coach. Nope. Because he, he'll just stay with Dabo at Clemson forever. He, like, it, look, I wonder if, if Dabo's true to his word now, if he's a man of his word, he says, if college kids start getting paid, I'm going to quit. He well, then Brett could take that job. He ain't quitting. He's making oh, all so, he, so he's a liar then. Yeah. He's a liar. It's a, you, you heard him playing R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I know. Like in the I locker know. room after. Like this, this all shucks nobody believes in us. Dude, you're you've been the best program in the last five years. Yeah. There's no team in a five year span, not even the great Alabama, has been as good or as dominant as you over a five year span. Especially please, in the conference that you were off. In. Now I will like, tell you we'll we'll get into that later. We'll get into that when we get break down that game. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Let's so uh, we, I want to bring it before. I don't know how much longer any other stories you want to talk. There's a ton to, to talk about this game. There, there's things that will, when this is over, we'll be like, damn, we didn't even bring that up. And it was a big deal. I want to bring up the fact that they kept talking about how all these players kept getting hurt, and how physical this game was, and all this stuff. Uh, so you call it physicality. I. I don't think these guys were in shape and ready to play. This is the reason why I like my teams battle tested. I think Ohio State played two good teams the entire season. Okay. Yeah, but how many did Clemson play? Zero. Zero. Yeah, there you but go. anyway, that's what I'm saying. They played two. The other team played none. And and when I say two good teams, the second time they played Wisconsin, Wisconsin was good. All right. Neither one of these teams were battle tested. We thought their defenses were unbelievable because they hadn't played anybody. We thought their offenses were unbelievable. They hadn't played anybody. And they played one another and they're dropping like flies. I'm going to tell you, Clemson better not take these two weeks off to get in, 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 in healthy. They better spend these next two weeks running nothing but sprints. They don't, they, if they go easy the next two weeks getting ready for this game and this national championship, you think they were cramping in that game? No, no, no. <laughs> They're going to be dropping like flies. Brett Vilma won't yeah. have any defensive players to catch. You know the reason there's a no-star guy out there at the end of the game is because his starters his starters weren't physically capable of being out there. Yeah, which is nuts, right? I because mean, they crazy. weren't in shape enough. Yeah, it's it's crazy. They uh, So in the second half, they had Isaiah Simmons uh, basically playing safety. Yes. Like it was unbelievable. Like yeah. that kid can play every position on the Well, field. no, he's just a he I mean, he's obviously in consideration. I was gonna say, you think he's the best athlete in college football? That that's he's, a bold statement because there are some just dudes that are just studs. Is, but is he, he the he, best defensive player in college football? I might would say yes on that. On the best athlete overall. Just like both the, sides of the ball doesn't matter. Eh, pro- I'm not going to go that far. I will say okay. he's, I will say he's the best defensive. He's in the conversation, though, right? Yeah, he's in the conversation. Yeah, but I, I think he's, I think he's just the best defensive football player. Like uh, Chase Young, what are, you can, you can scheme him out of a game because yeah, he's only got one we've position. We've seen it happen. Yeah, we've seen it happen multiple times. You cannot scheme Isaiah Simmons out of a game. Like no. he, 
if if he's not working at linebacker, whether they outside or inside, they'll just move him to safety or they'll sure. move him to the line. They'll move like they will move him somewhere and he will so make either an move impact. him up or back. Yeah. They'll and he'll make an impact on the game. That's right. I mean it was it was unbelievable to watch. That guy will never make it to where New England drafts and picks unless they fall off the cliff in the next couple of years. But that guy has Bill Belichick written all over him because of his yeah. versatility. Because he just does so much on the field. He just wants to win. Yes. That that guy and, and there are Sean Payton's probably that way on offense, but he he doesn't really mastermind the defense, so their defensive guys don't really do that a lot. Yeah. There are virtually no other coaches that play anybody outside of their position. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, let's go on and move over to Oklahoma LSU. We, we've spent 35 minutes on, on Clemson. I think Oklahoma that game deserved 35 minutes, though, right? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I mean, that was the best football game of the year, most watched game of the year. Ooh, okay. It's, okay, how about this? It Most was not the game best of the football game of the year. No, it was it. It was the it was the top five game with yeah, the it was highest great game. It, it just, we, we can just leave it at it was a fantastic game. Yeah, yeah, okay. Nothing wrong with that. I'm good with that. Uh, let's talk about LSU Oklahoma. LSU wins sixty three to twenty eight. Uh, did you hear? So, first off, super sad about Insminger's daughter in law, uh, Carly McCord. Yeah. It, all of that stuff coming out. I when I first heard, like my father in law said, Hey, there was a plane crash of some LSU people going to the game and I was like, Who was it? it like, why aren't they already there? What's going on? All this and he was like, I don't know, it's like some reporters or some big wigs going to the game, something, something, something. And I didn't think anything else about it until it gets close to kickoff, and then I finally check Twitter and I see Oh, okay. Well, this kind of changes things. Like, is he actually going to coach in the game? Or when I saw that he was going to coach in the game, I thought they are going to destroy this team. Like, he he is going all guns blazing. Like, he's just going to throw everything at him. Yeah. And that's. I mean, it's exactly what happened. Uh, See, I the the reporters, like all the media that surround that football program, had been saying leading up to the game that. The LSU staff wasn't really hiding the fact that they didn't think much of this Oklahoma team. They said Oklahoma was not even a top 15 team and were not one of the best five teams that LSU played this year. I don't know about the top 15 because when you get past 10, it does fall off. And I had some arguments that I don't know that they're 10, but I'm, I'm with, they had the resume to be there. So I'm yeah. a resume guy, not a what I think of you guy. Yeah. If you've got the resume, then you get the job, even if you're not qualified for the job. Um, you don't show up, that's on you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so I'm okay with them being in the game, but they weren't a top five team that they played all year. They just weren't. No, not even Alabama, close. Auburn. Um, Florida, uh, Georgia. Florida, Georgia, and probably Texas, because when they played Texas, yeah. it was just a different game. Well, different Our environment, home. all that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a road game, and this was virtually a home game. Yeah. So, yeah, that, all of those things considered, I they were right about, yeah, this is probably the sixth best team we played all year. It, uh, it, now, I will say this. They asked Orgeron after the game uh, who were the best teams that LSU played this year. And uh, did you hear his response to this? No, I didn't hear his response. He said, he said Alabama, Alabama, and then Florida and Auburn. He didn't yeah. even throw Georgia in there. <laughs> no, I didn't even, well, they beat the hell out of Georgia. Florida, Alabama, and Auburn at least it, all got close or were close at points it, of the game. It cracked me up that he said Alabama twice to start. He yeah. said Alabama, Alabama, Florida, hey, and Auburn. Man. Hey, we're going to whip their ass in recruiting. We're going to whip their ass every time we see them on this field. Yep, yep. That's It, it cracked me up because that, Roll time it, what? there were so many people that were uh, – Saying like LSU fans on Twitter saying, you know, yeah. we expect Alabama fans to be cheering, like pulling for the SEC in the playoff and da 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 da. And somebody responded and was like, yeah, I think that ship sailed with the, the roll tide, what comment? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think Alabama well, fans. Well, but I also play. think, and let's be fair, there's a lot of SEC teams that haven't followed the, 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 but like the cheering company, for the SEC, because the company line for Alabama. And, 
uh, with Jalen being the quarterback of the other team, I completely understand yeah. why you would want to root for your guy because he was your guy. I will I say this. The, totally the story um, with Jalen was great. Now, yes. this, this year ended exactly how uh, any rational Alabama fan would think it would have ended for Jalen. Like, yep. there, that team was not even close to LSU – and the storyline for LSU is a lot of fun. Like, there's yeah. a real possibility that if LSU beats Clemson, this will be the best season maybe in the history of college football. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, not just this best season. I, I think this is the best team in the history of college football. Now, if they lose to Clemson, you don't get that. You, yeah. don't, you don't get that mantra. You, you don't get that label if you don't win the last game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think Joe Burrow, his season is the single greatest season in college football history. And the story uh, is so much fun to follow. And these the the coordinator, uh, Insminger and and Brady, like it, those two together have been so much fun to watch. Aranda with the I way don't know that, how I don't know how I missed this, but I read a report that came out at the end of November, or so, at some point in time in November is when the article was written. That Imzinger's stepping down next year, he's going to retire. No one one place I saw that at no, no, one no, no, place no. It, and it, nowhere else. It, I can't it, find any other mention of it anywhere. It, but it, it was like been, a two four seven article. It, it, don't hate me if it's wrong on two four seven. A company like that, a reputable company that I follow and get information from. I mean, it it, it may have been like a message board post. That well, it was an article, so that it's one of those things where they take a message board post and they write about it because some of these places are real bad about that. I, I mean, yeah, some are pretty bad about that. Uh, I'm going to be upset if that happens he, because I don't think he's I, going to. I wasn't prepared to say goodbye to him emotionally. I need some time here, okay? I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't like. I knew Joe was leaving, so I emotionally have dealt with this this entire season. Well, Joe, Joe I, Burrow, yeah, you, you've yes, been expecting but, that. But I wasn't expecting Steve. So uh, I don't think I don't think you have to worry about that. Uh, I the, hope not. The rumor was that Insminger would step down as OC and Joe Brady would take over. I think they're going to stay co-OCs. I think I, they I are think, too. I mean, they, I, well, they and, and why not? Unless Ims, if Insminger wants to do less work because he is a lot older, then then that you still get to be OC and y'all two can still work together and you can still get paid the same. Like, I don't care. Yeah. But that's the greatest thing about this coaching staff is, man, there are no egos here. There just no. aren't. They you just don't win. hear that in every other locker room. And I know that I've brought up the Alabama stuff a lot because a, it's fun to make fun of them because there's not a lot I get to make fun of them about. <laughs> that's a, that's a kudos to you and your team. But also, um, they're the easiest example because they happen. They have just so much turnover. Being yeah. that good that long, you're going to have a lot of turnover. But when all those guys leave, nobody leaves good. Even when they're leaving to take a head coaching job, they still you still get reports about how they were bad mouthing somebody else and they were fighting with somebody else and nobody liked. And kudos to Nick, you never hear about any of that crap when the season's going. Yeah. As soon as they're gone, all the dirty laundry spills, and you it. I guess that could happen if this team ever falls apart or not falls apart, but divides and goes somewhere else. I don't see it happening though. He, they, he's done a masterful job of bringing together old veteran football guys and young, innovative, fiery guys. And I've never seen a melt like this before. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I, it feels different because the comparison is being made of course, to like 2010 Auburn, yes. which in the course of it, you know, you've got this outstanding grad transfer quarterback that not everybody thought was going to be, you know, right. all world, but ended up being the best player in football for a year. Yeah. And is it only him or is it, you know, something else that's going along with it? Like, it, is, is it just the makeup of this team and the staff and everything else? You know, at Auburn, the next year they went eight and four. I don't sure. feel like that's what this is. Okay, so I'm worried about that. I mean, you've had this conversation off yeah. air. I don't. I mean, we may have said something. So, I I think I think that that's possible, and it all depends on who the trigger man is, because I know 
replacing Burrow is not going to be easy. Mm. I know that we're not just going to turn around and the next guy is going to be just as good. I get that. Um, and this team is losing a lot of dudes. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, you know, last I mean, year on, we on lost defense some. For sure and- last year we lost some. This year, I think I think we're losing a lot, a lot, a lot. That's uh, you know, that's a good question. I'll uh, hey, while you're looking that up, let me yeah. tell listeners. And the story's always better from the original storyteller, not the guy regurgitating the thing that he heard. Um, if you're bored, even if you don't like Lombardi, I quote him a lot. I regurgitate a lot of his stuff. Um, always give him credit. And uh, go check out GM Shuffle from today, which is Monday, the thirtieth, uh, and. You're only four minutes into the thing, and he's already said everything he needs to say about this. So if you don't like listening to him, you don't like all the stories, you don't like the way he breaks down, get four minutes of it. He, while at Cleveland, somehow came across Miss Carly, and she wanted to be an NFL scout. And he tells a story about how she reached out to him. She came and found him and asked him about being an NFL scout. And he started using her. And asking about guys and said, no, they're not. He was only in Cleveland for one year. And then after that one year, he gets fired. He ends up back in New England. He calls her when Bill and them are evaluating um, uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and says, look, I know you know the SEC. And I know you know all these schools in the South. But you, if you're going to be a scout and you want to do this, you, you, need to, you need to be able to talk to anybody about anything. And so he asked her, get the dimes on Jimmy G and tell me, tell me, is he good or bad? Good to go, not. And her breakdown on Jimmy G was unbelievable. Talked about the leadership, talked about how I know this guy looks like a playboy and he's a college quarterback. And, and, and so, you know, he's, he's clean. He's a good dude. He's not going to give you any problems and the team will follow him. Uh, another guy was, oh man, my, and you know, guys, this happens all the time. My mind just goes blank right when I'm thinking of a guy. The the LSU offensive lineman that was involved where his girlfriend got murdered, and he was a suspect. He called Carly, and and Bill and him sat down and talked to Carly, and Carly vouched for the kid, said, no, this guy's not a suspect, not anywhere close to this. But the police um, and, the, and the security are still considering him, and they won't take his name off. Um, but I'm telling you, if you draft him, he's going to be cleared of everything 100%. It's not a wasted pick at all. And the Patriots security staff said the police won't clear him. We won't clear him. We have a hard line on that. We're not going down that road. And that guy was going to be the first round pick for the Pats. Instead, I think he fell to third or fourth to the Cowboys. Um, and uh, But when the Pats security team crosses somebody off, it's just a cross off, man. Yeah, there's no crossing it. But she was used for that. And uh, Lombardi said if he ever got another G- GM job, he he was going to hire her as a scout because what she had done for him the few years that he worked with her, um, the one year in Cleveland, the couple of years in New England, she, everybody she gave us a, a report on, not a hundred percent, no bust, no bust. If she said a guy. She he he had the report on Johnny Manziel because it's the year he got fired, and he <laughs> told Jimmy before he left, "I'm I'm out. I know you're firing me. Stay away from this kid. He won't last." And sure enough, and she had the report. She was right on everything, and it would have been awesome because women are getting a lot more jobs in in sports in a lot of high profile jobs. There's a lot of beside, behind the scene jobs. That, that they're actually harder to get because nobody cares if you don't hire women or not because nobody ever sees them. And and she wanted to be a scout. And, and Lombardi, to his credit, says, hey, not only was I going to hire her, but we were using her and paying her to, to get his information on guys, and she was great at it. That's, and he said, I guess awesome. just nobody else called her. She got back into radio. She got back into reporting, and she was really good at it. So why quit doing that if nobody's going to give you the call for the other thing? Yeah. Um, but she, I thought she, that was a cool story. He told it, and and before the four-minute mark, I looked at my podcast, see when it was. Before the four-minute mark was up, the, the story was finished, and I thought, I'm going to tell people about this. Go listen to this if you're interested in this girl. Yeah. Um, she was more than just a reporter. She was a football girl. 
Yeah, and uh, obviously daughter-in-law of the offensive coordinator. Uh, I mean, she like you read the Sports Illustrated uh, interview uh, from Ross Dellinger with Insminger Jr. Um, and she woke up at four a.m. every morning to teach English to yeah. uh, kids in China. Yep, and it like did it online, obviously. That's uh, right. But that's it, it's. I believe it's called VIP Kids. And it's yeah, and there's either, a program. Yeah, my, my wife, wife has looked into it for some yeah. extra cash. Yeah. And here's what's crazy. Like, she comes from a family. She doesn't need the extra cash. Now, I don't know their finance. I don't know their lifestyle. You know, it's not for me to say. But it's not like that job pays twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year. I mean, no. she's waking up and doing it for, you know, a she, little spending money. Because she wants to. Like, yeah. That, that's the that's that's a, That crazy. says more about her heart. My, we were going to do it to pay bills. Yeah. But. But uh, but no, so yeah, that's that's incredible. It says a lot about her and her character. And and here's the sad thing, I'm sure those four other people that lost their life have great stories too. Yeah. And it, we don't know them. We just don't know them. It's a tragic thing that happened before the game. We know this one. We're telling this story. Yeah. Now you got that right. Uh, LSU. As far as uh, we were talking about their depth chart and what they're returning next year. Uh, so Sadiq Charles, left tackle, he is a junior, so he's eligible for the draft. We'll see. Uh, Adrian McGee, he's a senior, he's gone, so that's left guard is gone. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, he's the center, he is a junior, uh, chance he could leave. Yeah. Uh, Damian Lewis, he's a senior, right guard, he'll be gone. Austin uh, Deculus, Deculus. Do you know? How to, I don't know how to say the name. I don't know. I, I, uh, I can't. I can't read it. But he, he's six foot seven, three hundred twenty-two pounds. <laughs> he's a junior, uh, yeah. so he could possibly be gone. Thaddeus Moss, son of Randy Moss. Uh, I think he's coming back. I think he's probably coming back. He's a junior. Uh, yes, but boy, he is some kind of talented. What do you have? Ninety-six yards and a touchdown in this one. Um, now the only way he doesn't come back because I don't think he's going to get a great graft trade. He'll get a good one. Is if is if Randy got a call from Bill saying. If the boy comes, we got him. Yeah. That's it, because they need a tight end. And they need one that can block, and they need one that can catch, and he can do both. And, he's yeah, he's 6'3", 250 pounds. So. And I don't think this year if he came out, I think he would be a second-round guy. Yeah, and in that instance. Maybe a third-round guy, but if, not if a first-day guy. If you're, if you're first or second and you're a tight end, probably, probably go. Like, oh, probably I don't know, go. man. If you're a second-round guy this year – and if they can get a trigger man for next year, I mean, he could he could be like those Iowa boys. Agreed. And there's a big difference between top ten money, top fifteen money. But that that's that's what I'm saying though is in second round money. You, he's not you gotta, first round guy. He's got to be real confident in in who they're going to bring back at quarterback. I don't. Well, I don't know about that. I, I think the New England, can, you know, it's always there. Even even if he falls to if his numbers fall off and he falls to fourth round. Yeah. He could play in New England and get paid. So. Yeah, no, you're right about that. Uh, behind him, of course, you got Stephen Sullivan, who is a uh, or not? Yeah, Stephen Sullivan, um, six five, two forty. He's a senior. He's gone. So you're you could possibly lose both of your uh, top two tight ends, um, and then you got a senior coming back. Like he's a junior this year, but he'll he'll come back. Jamar Chase, uh, he is only a sophomore. He'll be back. Yep. Terrace Marshall, only a sophomore. He'll be back. Yes, sir. Um, Justin Jefferson is a junior, and I would assume he is gone. He is gone. Gone. He is gone. gone. Uh, Joe Burrow is gone. Um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is an interesting case. Uh, behind him, I mean, you got three uh, freshmen. Yeah, right I'm here. not as – I love love Clyde. Love Clyde. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he's an NFL guy or not. His size is small. Oh, yeah. But, it, but he's – I mean, he's almost exactly like Josh Jacobs, like from Alabama last year. Like true, it, the league has gone more to a passing guy, and and he's that. He is that. So he, he can he can run it too, boy. Don't tell oh, him yeah. he's little. No, he can run. I just know how the. That's not a criticism for me, by the way. I'd like to get this on record that these league scouts are married to metrics. They yes. they just are. Oh yeah, they just are. Hundred percent. So on offense, you <coughs> excuse me, you are guaranteed losing. One, two, five, three, four. Four on offense. That well, includes just Burrow. Just the seniors, though, right? No, no, or no. Did you count Jefferson? No, I counted Jefferson with that. You're okay, only losing yeah, three seniors. I think seniors. he is out of here. Yeah, Jefferson's gone. Um, so that is, you're losing four starters on offense. 
And, and I worry about the O-line. This this O-line was the best offensive line in the country. Uh, some of those juniors could get good draft grades. And yeah. right now the offensive line in the NFL is really bad. I, I could I could see them going. Yeah. So, let's see. One, two, da, 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 three, four. Yeah, I think that's it. So, only four guaranteed, guaranteed. and that includes Jefferson. Uh, on defense, let's see. Glenn Logan is a junior. Uh, defensive end, he could possibly go. Uh, no, I think defensively we're bringing a lot of guys back. Yeah, yeah. I'm just because, talking about this offense and the, and defensively every year. We as long as Dave Aranda is there, I trust in this defense to be good. I'm not worried about that. We've never had an offense like this, so this is what my worry is. Yeah. Those that side of the ball. Your uh, your playmakers are for the most part all young guys. Like oh Christian, yeah, Christian Fulton oh. is a senior. Grant Delpit might leave. Yes, he could leave. Other than that, I mean, Jacob Phillips is a junior. No, he's not going anywhere, though. I mean, you're, you're losing Rashard Lawrence and Brendan Fejoko, uh, Fejoko, excuse Yes, me. I, I hate losing that guy. Yeah. Oh. Um, but they are, they're both seniors. They're gone. Other than no. that, I mean, he, LSU returns a ton. Just a ton. On, de- on, de- on defense, I'm not. Yeah, but, but even on I never worry. I never worry about defense even when we lose a ton. I mean, there's been years where we've lost, you know, four or five unbelievable All-Americans, yeah. and and we just replace them. Yeah, I don't still, worry about still that. Still got talent. Still got talent. We've never back. done this on offense. That's my worry. All right, so let's actually talk about the game for a little bit because okay. we are, we're now 56 minutes in here. So we, we won't spend long on this because it was a complete thrashing. It was 49-14 at the half. LSU already had 500 yards of offense at the end of the first half. Could have put up 100 if they wanted to. Yes. Yes, they could. Uh, I The way that the game was going, like I took a live under of 87.5, and, and then I took a live under of 90.5. And thought, Ooh, and, I I thought kept, and I kept telling you, don't yes. do it. No, you, don't you do did. It. Now, the only one that hit was an under 104 and a half. So <laughs> at least I got some of that back. So, <laughs> but I, I, like, I had LSU. He, if I would have seen an under of 104 at that time when you know Burrow is out, like, how the hell do you not just put yeah. everything you got in the account on that? Well, because I was terrified. Because Oklahoma would have been at one hundred four and a half, and Joe's not playing. Uh, we're done. That, that, ain't, that ain't happening. They're not getting three more scores, no. and it was only like the fourth quarter left. Yeah. So, and I, I thought, it, like, what I was terrified of is, all right, it, maybe Oklahoma has just quit. Maybe. You know? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. But then at some point in time, if we see they've quit, we just kill it. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what. In, well, they did. Yeah, and they definitely. You no, know, you would have hit the ninety and a half. We got down, and the guy slid, and then they were yeah. like, eh, we're running the play. We're not yeah. kneeling it, and then put it in. And that busted his 90 and a half, so you almost hit two of them. Yeah, I was I was pretty irritated. I, before that 90 and a half, because I, I thought that the 90 and a half like, was going to get busted, yeah. that's when it – it had already gotten up to 104 and a half for the live line. And I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I'll just go in and hit this now because I don't think there's any way that they yeah. – So um, – At that point in time, yeah, yeah. not happening. Uh, as far as total offensive yards, 692 for LSU on 74 plays. That's 9.4 yards per play. Uh, and that includes- I really wanted to hit 700 just to make a – just to hit that uh, – eclipse that seven mark. Yeah. But- um, it, it, the – I mean, this is with kneel downs. This is with slides. This – I mean, you know, like it, it easily should have been 10 yards a play. Easily. Uh, I said before the game in our preview, we weren't going to punt. Yeah, we punt it, but but, but it not, was already over by the time he started punting. But not, but not much. But not much. Uh, Oklahoma had 322 yards of offense on 62 plays. That's 5.2 yards per play. Um, so all season they ran uh, a counter. All season they had like 117 counters. Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma did. Okay, go. I was about to say, I don't remember us running much counter no, option. No, no, no. Oklahoma ran counters 117 times for like 870-something yards. It was like almost eight yards per play when they ran the counter this year. And they, against LSU, they ran it five times for four yards. Like, it, but, it, it is, but Gary, it's assignment defense. This like, defense is not very good. They I know. Everybody told you that all year. They gave up 30 points to Vanderbilt, Gary. 
They gave up 30. I mean, I know we scored 66, but you know, we gave up, we gave up 37 to Ole Miss. Yeah. I mean, we we're always 21 points ahead of them, but we still gave up 37. Yeah. Well, it, I don't even think it was the points. I think it was, you know, against Ole Miss, he gave up 400 some odd yards rushing. Yeah. But it one was against... guy, one guy, we were not prepared for stopping. Well, it, it wasn't just that. It was Rich Rod had switched this Ole Miss offense basically to like they had triple option principles. I, I was just about to say they basically ran a triple option, and when you don't know that a triple option's coming, you have zero days to prepare. Yeah. Not a week. Zero but days. Even, even if you knew, it was still the week after the Alabama game in a road game, and you yeah. were already up thirty-one to three before they did anything. And I know the nation doesn't take Ole Miss seriously because nationally they just don't have move the needle at all. That that is kind of our Achilles' heel every year. By the way, Ole Miss has always been our biggest rival before the Alabama LSU thing happened, yeah. and and it's always gonna be. Yeah. I agree. It's got, we're we're going to get their best no matter where we are. If we're an eight-win team, if we're a five-win team, or if we're a 13-14 win team, we're going to get their best yeah. every year. Now you're, you're 100% right on that. Getting them after Bama scares me because I do think there are going to be years where that's going to cost us because we're not always going to have Joe. I don't think that – I don't think that they play – Ole Miss after Alabama next year. Oh no, we've that, because they've moved so many of those bigger games to November. Is that right? Remember, we talked about this earlier. Maybe we did. We that moved was... Auburn to November. We moved y'all to November. Obviously, this year, a um, And M's moved November, and there's another game that got moved for us to November. And then we're always going to have like a cupcake game in there. Let's see. No, no, no. Uh, here we go. Uh, Ole Miss LSU is Saturday, September 26th next year. It was early. Yeah. So, uh, so historically, it used to be Halloween night, and I wish they would go back to that. I would do anything in the world for those two programs to say, unless it's on a Sunday, we're playing on Halloween. Well, I mean, if you do Halloween, it's it's the week before the Alabama game. <laughs> but I'm okay. Okay, playing Ole Miss the week before the Alabama game. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not worried. I know I'd rather play Rice. Yeah. But I'm okay or not have a game at all. That's that's kind of okay. funny that you bring that up because they they do play Rice right before Ole Miss. So yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> uh, it's UTSA Texas Rice, uh, and that's in NRG Stadium in Houston. But I think that's more a recruiting trip than anything that's else. A, that's a recruiting trip. Yep. Um, and then Ole Miss Nichols, and then the real schedule starts with at Florida, at Arkansas, Mississippi State. By week, Alabama, South Carolina, at Auburn, at Texas A&M to end the year. So, so you can I, – I talked about LSU. I know we're not even covering this game at all anymore. Know, right? um, I've talked about LSU recruiting in the past and how they moved, specifically moved, the Arkansas game and the A&M game. And the A&M game to the end of the year because every other year we get to finish the season recruiting in the state of Texas. We just had the home and home with Texas – I would bet, I would bet that if Houston gets back up going, Baylor gets going, other Texas schools get going, LSU's going to come calling for a home and home. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. They like recruiting Texas. We do really well there. No, you're right about that. You are 100% right. Um, so, I mean, the reason we haven't covered much about this game is is not a lot to talk about. I mean, what – at some point in time, we just got to stop blowing Joe because that's what it was. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was – so I will say this, like, interesting part of this is uh, Chris Curry, you know, backup running back. He's a freshman for LSU. 90 yards on 16 carries. Uh, I mean, that's that's not bad, right? No. That's a, it's good. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that Clyde didn't have to play a lot. And – uh Really didn't. So you talk about helmet to helmets. Yeah. Really didn't like that one. Yeah, you talk was, about one. One was a hard play where the guy did something stupid and he should know better, not drop his head. The yeah. other is intent. And when you got intent, I'm okay taking the guy out and throwing him in the river. So we had actually we were texting back and forth about this, and in my thought process, because I think it was already 35 to seven at this point, right? Yep. My thought process was he already knows that this game is over. I'm headhunting now. And may, well, uh, maybe he wasn't necessarily headhunting, but he knew he was going to get kicked out for that. So it was like, I don't want to play anymore. How can I get out of this game 
without let just, me hurt somebody. It, well, yeah, basically, like hurt somebody or just take a cheap shot. And even if it doesn't, I mean, hurt if you want to get if you want to get thrown out of a game, the next time a receiver catches a ball on you, throw a punch. Because a, you're not hurting anybody throwing a punch to a helmet. Yeah, we all if, know that. But, but if you do that, then you get suspended for next year. And you it, don't think he's going to get suspended for next year with this? No, I don't think so. Like I know that that's crazy. I understand like it's completely different, but I I think it's a targeting call. It it was in the first half. He's out for this game, and then it is what it is. If you throw a punch, it goes a lot more viral. Like it's just that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I that agree with throwing you. a punch to a helmet is is seen as horrific and unforgivable, and this is seen as hey, paid his price. I know, right? Like I, I know it's completely that's asinine. bullshit. But, I mean, it is what it is. Like, Well, screw that guy. Uh, CeeDee Lamb had four catches for 119 yards. He was unbelievable. Um, and yet they could only get him the ball four times. Like, that just... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he, um, they did a really good job shutting him down. But that's, I mean, that's shutting a guy with that kind of talent down. He, he was the best player on their team. Yeah, wasn't close. No, wasn't, wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. But I think he is the best player on their team. Yeah. Yeah. All I don't year. Think a, I don't think it's a question. I don't like, either. I, I think he was the best player on the team last year. Like, even better than Kyler Murray. I think he made Kyler Murray. Like. I don't know. That team was loaded last year. They lost a couple NFL guys. I mean, they, look, their offensive line was unbelievable. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, I, it, it is what it is. But. That it was you just think, you think Lincoln says, Man, I've made this thing three times, I've got my ass whipped three times. I'm gonna take this Cowboys job. I think this makes it much more likely. I think it makes it easy to take it because hey, man, I am the best coach in all of college football right now, and I can't win the title because we play a different style of football. And and I'm never going to change what Oklahoma is. I, well, but I, I don't can take this job. I don't and think if I that. fix that offense, I can do it. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily that. I think what he does will work in the NFL. And it, it it's they don't have the players to be able to compete in the college football playoff every year. Like Oklahoma, it recruits, that's insane, Gary. That you. But look at what has happened to them the last three years. Like, I understand that they were right there with Georgia two years ago in the Rose Bowl, and they had a lead. But that's against a Georgia team that had not been able to put up points against anybody. Yeah, and it, that's, they, that's a Kirby Smart coach football team. Yes. They're not hard to stop. And instead, you give up 54 points to them and, and lose the game in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. It was an all-time great game, but you've had Heisman Trophy winner, Heisman Trophy winner, second place, like the runner-up Heisman Trophy. Yeah. And... You, you're showing that you are capable of running a great offense, and now you've got a good defense coordinator. You ain't got the dudes to be able to compete because it, it's a whole different ball game. That you can go eleven and one, you can go twelve and zero, thirteen and zero, whatever it is in the Big Twelve. When you get, if if they were to go and do home and homes with SEC teams, yeah, it's just not happening. You're not beating Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Auburn. I, I think Florida. if they do it, and this is not just an SEC blowhard. No, I think if they do it with a over. lot of Big Ten teams, they don't do it. They're yeah. not going into o, o, uh, Iowa. They're not going into Wisconsin and just chalking up W's. They're not going into Michigan. They're not going to Ohio State. They don't Penn have State. the linemen. No, they might win those games. I'm not saying they can't win those games, but that's not one where you just chalk up the win. No, and, and when you get into the college football playoff, they don't have the guys to be able to win those games. Yeah, I agree. We agree. We at, agree least, at, at least not two of them. Like you, you might be able to sneak one of them. Yeah, you know, like it, it, they could have. They could have been. It's Georgia. kind of insane that a place like Oklahoma can't get defensive dudes to come there. I, I know it's. And they put a lot of defensive guys in the NFL. Yeah, they do, but not linemen. No, not in trenches. You're right. So I, I just it, it, like right. football as much as it is evolving. It is still very much a sport that is dominated in the trenches. Yeah. LSU's got the guys. Alabama's now, the trenches the look a lot different. The defensive linemen are no longer 350-pound, just hold the plug the whole guys. No, I mean, because those, you, guys are, those guys are 260 and freak athletes. They didn't used to be that. you got to be able to uh, run with these offenses. Yes. 
You, you have to be every bit as athletic in size as the running backs. Yes. Well, and, and in a lot of cases, the wide receivers. Like, you got to and – the, and the tight ends. Well, you're you're going to have defensive receivers. linemen be wide receiver no, size. I'm, I'm with you. Or I'm edge rushers you. be wide receiver size, but – but your edge rushers are typically nowadays linebackers. So yeah, they're linebackers, but they're not covering a wide receiver. They can cover tight ends. They cover running agreed, backs. Agreed. They're but not so, covering a wide so receiver. So the deal is at at Oklahoma, you have to be able to get a push on the defensive line, and they haven't been able to do that. I mean, since early two thousands, like it, it's no. going to take a long time for the pendulum to shift back to where Oklahoma will be able to compete for a national championship. And like he's he's a fantastic coach. But you you can't get the guys, like it's yeah. just it's almost impossible. Yeah. So, you know, I I think if he's going to if he's going to take an NFL job, now would be the time to do it because you are young enough. Your stock is incredibly high. Yeah. And at at what point do you stop being able to get the number one transfer to come your to come to your place? Well, and and that's the thing. Like, if you don't get the transfer, then what happens? Right? They've got the number one quarterback in the country from high school from two years ago, whatever years it is, Spencer ago. Rattler, that they just haven't played. Yeah. Because, I mean, what what do you do? Like, he couldn't beat out Kyler Murray, and he couldn't beat out Jalen Hurts, who can't really throw the football that well. So, it kind of it, it scares you off of that, and it makes it where you can't really recruit quarterbacks if you keep doing the transfer market. So right. You can't go into some kid's house and say, your son's going to play, and he's going to be our guy when – no, I'm just going to go find some, you yeah. know, red shirt senior, red shirt junior, and they I mean, graduated. And I'm going to yeah. let them play for a year and move on. And that's – it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. I, I think if he was going to make the jump, this would be the year to do it. And I, so I, I, I would love to see it because I think that his style can win in the NFL. I do too. So – and we'll see because uh, right now, I mean, it's, it is silly season in the NFL, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. But, whew, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. All right. Is there we anything else in this game that we need was, to hit? It was fun. No, I mean, I'm sure there's parts of the football that were important that we missed. But Well, here, here in a few days, we're going to do our, our national championship preview yeah. and our picks and whatnot. And if there's something that we needed to hit, then we will get to it. Uh, but for the most part, Two fun football games. Uh, the the point differential, uh, points per game differential. It, everybody talks about moving to eight teams. The only reason you would move to eight teams is to get more of a national uh, That's it. base. Get more people. Well, hang on. I, I don't know that I've ever been. See, I'm, I'm a proponent of more playoff teams, but I've been very honest about it's not to get a better champion. It's to make this thing actually matter. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it's to to grow the sport. Virginia being in the in the in the New Year's ACC Six. championship game doesn't do anything. Yeah, for anybody, and Clemson playing an extra game against another high school team doesn't do anything for anybody. But if but if they had to play, even if they had to play Memphis, then they beat the hell out of Memphis. Like okay, but at least we got some different blood in here, and yeah. we're seeing more. And really, it's more for. Those other teams, it's it a saves coaches' jobs, which I think is always a good thing, and b it gives that first round, which is right now the conference championship round, it gives that game more cachet because right now this year we had one marquee game that we thought mattered, and another game kind of mattered in the SEC and the Big Ten, and that was it. But we played a lot of them. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. I don't think that we should do automatic bids necessarily. Ooh. Um but I, I think if you put in eight teams, then you have an Oregon. Then you have, you know, you've still got your Oklahoma in there. You've got you got more teams yeah. from more conferences and from I don't more think regions. they can win, but how many great games are we gonna get that week earlier? You know? And and it may you not be it may not be great games, but it could be great matchups. It could be it could look great on paper. I think you would get more great games. You'd it's get a lot. it's possible. I mean, the the more the more chances you take, the more darts you throw at the board. Yeah. Obviously, you got more of a shot to be able to hit one of them to make it interesting. It if just only, makes the round one more entertaining, and then round two could be more entertaining. But round yeah. two hasn't been entertaining at all right now, anyway. No, the the the, the semifinals have been awful. Yes. Like this, this was the best 
semifinal game between Clemson and Ohio State that we've had since year one. And let's be honest, Ohio State it wasn't great. Alabama. Ohio State couldn't score in the red zone, dropped a bunch of passes. Yeah. And Clemson couldn't score the first half. Like yeah. that's not great football. And it no, wasn't it's not great football, but it, it was it was at least an entertaining game. Uh, yes. the, the points per game um, differential between the teams in the semifinals leading up to this was 25.3. And then you had a six-point game between Clemson and Ohio State, and you had a 35-point win for LSU, which really could have been worse. Could so, have been worse. You know, that's that's the deal. Like, if, if you're averaging uh, almost three touchdowns, or uh, no, if you're averaging more than three touchdowns, almost four touchdowns, between teams, I mean, you had Alabama and Michigan State that was thirty-eight to nothing. You had Clemson, Ohio State that was thirty-one to nothing, and then Clemson, Oklahoma was thirty-seven seventeen. Alabama, Oklahoma last year was basically what? your four-five, and no, your four-six, four-seven, and five-six matchups would be awesome. Yeah, they would be awesome. Like you would get a couple of really good games in there, and I don't know what what it would have looked like. Well, every- it would year. be it'd be one eight two seven three six and four five. And okay. Your your three six this year may not have been good because Clemson would be playing against whoever. But this is the first year that we've had three dominant teams. Yeah. So every other year that three six game would have been a really good game, and your four five game would have been a great game. Yeah. Would have been a great game. So I I agree with you. I think like you've got a chance to get more interesting games. You get more people watching because it's games that actually matter. You know, I, I, well, we'll see. And my, other, and my other reason for wanting more is we're at the end of the season. And I just, I'm. <laughs> you I want, want more, more meaningful football. <laughs> I want, I, I want more. I just do. I agree. I, I hate when. Uh, it's not that people deserve it. It's not that these other teams. Win. But here's the thing. If you are that seven seed and you go on the run and you win it all, nobody can say you didn't deserve it. Hell. No, you're right about that. You're hundred percent right about that. All Do right. It. I think we'll that's gonna wrap it up. Uh so of course go to winningcureseverything.com, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, etc. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the like button, uh, share the show out, tell your buddies about it. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, leave a review, <laughs> subscribe to the show, all that good stuff. We uh we're gonna keep this going in the off season. Obviously, we've still got football left, we still got NFL. We are gonna be hitting on all of it. Uh and I get, this may be the last one before the new year, maybe. I don't know. We'll talk about that. But if it is, we hope you all have a happy new year. Be safe out there. Don't go crazy on New Year's Eve. Don't be amateurs. You, you can drink all year. Don't, don't, don't do something stupid. So yeah, Don't kill yourself, man. Yeah. We want you to come back. Your families want you to come home. Exactly. That's the way it goes. So don't do anything crazy. Hang around. We still going to be here. So sure. we want you to come in and join with us. Uh, go to smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You get 20% off your order. And if your order is over 40 bucks, they're going to ship it to you for free. It's pretty awesome. Also, Tunica Travel. Tunica, Mississippi is uh, the presenting sponsor of the show. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six incredible sports books. We vouch for all of them. they got a bunch of other stuff, too, going on. Uh, great sports books, great everything else. So go check them out, tunicatravel.com. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up, right? All right, brother. Excellent. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.